The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. at it again with another episode of the shades of blue soccer show my name is cody bradley i am here as always with thad bell and robert russer what's up guys hey how you doing doing? (laughs) so tonight we're going to keep it short if i can keep these two in line tonight which it's like their favorite thing to derail me oh my god thad come on Oh, shut up, Robert. What are you talking about, man? You're usually like booming radio voice, bringing up things that we never talked about in pre-show, and then that we have to talk about, which then generates something else that we have to talk about, and then Cody can't get a word in edgewise, and it just drives him batty. Yeah, well, okay. Oh, I got some some long-winded co-hosts with me. (laughs) No, I just wanted to try to keep you from talking. He's rebelling because before we started, I said... (laughs) I said I said a hard line of 20 minutes, <laughs> and that, he just took that as a challenge on how to piss me off tonight. So. By the way, that was 20 minutes ago he said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 20 minutes ago. So tonight, Bob had a good conversational point for the win against Minnesota, and then I've got to talk about Alan Polito. It's such a weird situation. Not that he's not playing, not the Chicago thing, just that just that he's not playing and no one really knows why and sporting haven't even really had to answer a question about it anyway we'll get to it we will (laughs) and then we've got some transfer rumor stuff to talk about so 20 minutes that sounds doable bob bob yes sir yeah you had a good question about this game so get us started off here first game we win in five matches but were we that good or was minnesota just that weak what do you guys think I think it's that proverbial yes answer. <laughs> yeah, all of the above. Yeah, because I mean, bastard. Minnesota obviously was missing a lot of people, so was sporting. Minnesota was a little short on rest. That's not always been a good excuse when we've screwed up a game. He changed his formation, which I know a lot of their fans was all pissed off about. And they had a week rest after that game. And they brought in a couple, you know, some of their stars at the end to try to steal the goal, and they still couldn't do it. So it's a little bit of both. Yeah, you, you brought up good points there. I mean, I, the relentlessly positive uh, that I always am on this <laughs> on this show, uh, I am inclined I to think. <laughs> I am inclined to think that the Sporting were good. Like the the chances were real. You know, the whole the Vermees line of if we weren't creating chances, I'd be worried. But no, like they they did look really good. The point that Thad brought up that makes the most sense is like, yes, both teams were were ravaged with injuries. It was just kind of a game to survive. So no, nobody was necessarily that good. But I think under the circumstances, three in the midfield that no one thought this team would have started the season with. But, you know, under the circumstances, I think Sporting came out of that really well. Vermees even mentioned that in the press conference the other day was at the start of the season, you would have expected Gutierrez, Espinoza, and Ilya to be starting there. So none of those three are in the game even. Yeah, it's wild. And 
that's not even to mention the the two in the back are little babies. <laughs> like they played really good, but like that, it's just it's wild that. Chance, yes, the final touch wasn't there. The final ball maybe wasn't there, but man, the chances that they created, some of that stuff, just some of the movement, just looked great, and I, I was really impressed. You know, so, it even looks better on TV. You ever notice how when you watch it on TV, it looks to be faster paced than it actually was when you're there? You ever notice yeah, that? up in up in the press box, that wide angle, man. The game yeah. kind of slows down. You can you can see the plays developing. Yeah, it's amazing when a player is hurt and they have to sit up there. They go, "Wow, that game is much easier to da- up here." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real. <clears throat> so, go ahead. No, I, I was gonna say one point to something that Sporting wants to have done for the last couple of years is basically defense by possession. What was the final possession stat? 65, 35, something like that. That's one reason Minnesota didn't have much chance is they actually maintained possession and the couple times they lost it in dangerous situations, it didn't cost them. Final possession stats were 60, 39.7. Ha. Yeah, there you go. And Minnesota had how many shots on goal? Zero. Zero, yeah. Settle. Zero saves from Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, yeah, well, you know, he could just be a tree, right, Cody? Could have been. Could have been. I know, Cody, you have particular players you want to talk about, but, you know, during the game, I turned to Cody and said, hey, I just have this feeling that Minnesota's going to steal one. That's going to ruin the whole thing. <laughs> but it well, didn't happen. I think everyone felt like that. That's not a new feeling. We that's yeah. the feeling of watching a sporting Kansas City game is that's now what it is. Man, they dominate. Oh, we look so good, but there, there's just like a timer going until the team counters and steals <laughs> a point or all three. There, Minnesota had a chance somewhere like around the 80th minute, maybe. And oh, that, that breakaway. Was- yeah, I forget exactly when it was, but somewhere around that area. And it, when that failed, whatever, I don't remember even how it failed. Like they shot high or wide or somebody blocked it or whatever. Because obviously it couldn't have been on goal because Tim didn't make yeah. a save. But it was at that point I went, that was their chance. That was the one that would have normally went in. Well, the, and they had, yeah, later in the game for sure, that was the one. But they did have a bunch there at the beginning too. And one of them within like 45 seconds of the kickoff. So back to the general question, um, you know, as I watch this game on TV here, it's just I'm really liking the intensity. I, I mean, I saw it, yeah, when I was there, but you can see it better closer up, how hard they're working, how they're working together a little bit more. See on the wide angle, Cody, like you said. Um, mm-hmm. so it was a good effort, good team effort for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely liked it. And, you know, there's been a lot of disappointing performances and – Everyone has been kind of frustrated with the team as of late, kind of since this whole restart even. And I saw in this game a day of redemption for several players. Graham Zusi, I thought, was was one of them. Vermees, obviously, <laughs> liked the way he had been playing all season. But I know a lot of fans had been frustrated with him, I myself being one of them. And uh, I, thought, I thought he played great. No, he didn't have to do a lot of defending, and that's probably why he looks so good. But Zussi, Zussi was wonderful. What a ball. He took a, he took a licking for it, but uh, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was a little bit of a late hit there by uh, Thomas Chacon or whatever his name is. I mean, it wasn't like 12 seconds afterwards, but he had played yeah. the ball and got upended from behind. Another redemption performance I saw there, you could say, was Johnny Russell not frustrated it was just we just didn't see the johnny magic you know we hadn't seen it for a long time and there was still something there on that play that even after all of those every single one of those chances not going in and i still on that play was like oh he's nailing this i I (laughs) had no doubt that jfr was putting that one home i'm glad you were confident (laughs) you weren't you know this year i have seen him miss from the six yard box so earlier in the game well, just this year. I mean, he's just his – he's not had the killer put-at-home instinct most of this year. So I hope he has it now, and if he does, then that bodes well for the team because, quite honestly, that starting offense up there, well, the front three, was the same from 2018 when they scored a ton of goals. So, yeah, of course, they didn't have Gutierrez or – So then how about on the defense? Beesler. 
another player we've been frustrated with, Beesler, came out with the armband on again. And I, I thought he played really well. He was he did really well in distribution, played some of those long balls from the back line that, you know, skipped the midfield and, you know, kind of his patented play there. And yeah, he looked like looked like his old self a little bit. Yeah, he was stepping up, stepping through the line into the midfield mm-hmm. to make a lot of good distributions. Um, I'm going to make a little bit of a off, slightly off kilter uh, comparison here. Um, one of my favorite defenders in the in women's national team is Becky Sauerbrunn. She played here for FC Kansas City. She was good, but she seemed to always make one mistake a game that was very dangerous, right? So maybe it cost him, maybe it didn't. Well, it seems like Beesler has went from that guy who never made a mistake to now he makes one mistake a game. And if it costs us, then it, the whole, everything goes downhill. He made one mistake in this game. It was a sh- bad pass, weak. Yep, I remember And it. somebody cleaned it up, and it didn't cost them. And at that point, the confidence <laughs> built. <laughs> nice. That's just how Thad watches sport in Kansas City. He wait, waits for Beesler to make the mistake, and if we survive <laughs> it, we're good. We're good to go. Uh, not exactly, but, you know, there's, there's, like, moments where you do, like, you know, like, if it happens, that's a key point, that if it could have easily went the other way, and this team I don't think still has that great confidence that they're going to come back from being a goal or two down just because they've had that problem. Any love for – Luis Martins that game another maybe maybe re- redemption game no no <laughs> actually he did all right defensively I thought his offense was worse I mean he took some he made some crosses that I didn't think connected very well didn't go to the right yeah. areas he made some I know shots that were he, really way off one shot he took one shot from distance and he didn't hit it the way he wanted to but he still made forced a keeper to make a save <laughs> Danny? Danny. (laughs) (laughs) He started that game with on a we had a corner kick early. He had a beautiful they they played it to him. It was set for him. Right, yeah. He had a beautiful one touch curling ball that it looked like it hit (laughs) uh it looked like it hit Gotti Kinda like in the throat maybe instead of his instead of his head and they and he missed it. But it was like a it was a beautiful ball. Two people could have had it. Him uh, and Kyrie, yeah. yeah. He did. He did have a few errant passes, though, as the game went on. <laughs> yeah, and that could just be not being a hundred or ninety-minute fit. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, one of the places I like to watch, look at the ratings after games, after after I've kind of thought through my own opinions, is uh, who scored dot com. And interestingly, we you just talked about the top three on their ratings for sporting the, for that day top was zussi second was russell third was martin martins nah, ha, ha. <laughs> I you didn't throw beasler in there but you know uh, no I'm, uh, I'm as smart as an automated <laughs> automated yeah. thing that doesn't actually look at the games at all no but i trust this way better than that stupid Audi one <laughs> yeah foot mob is my preferred one so anybody else you want to talk about cody the only other thing I had to talk about for this game was the the Gotti Gerso connection. Okay. Those yeah. two are just very quick, clever. They have the audacity to try things. And I think those two are really gonna that's like really gonna cause problems for, for defenses. It's not always gonna come off. It's gonna it's gonna be horrible sometimes. But you know, one of those times that is gonna come off and it's gonna be like the goal of the year. <laughs> Well, they're both kind of alike in a way that they're both very freewheeling, like I said, very clever. But freewheeling. Sometimes, yes. sometimes you just don't know what they're going to do. And I think that's a teammate's problem, too. Sometimes you just don't know exactly what they're going to do. So you're not able to react like you need to because you're just oh, like, yeah. there they go. <laughs> yeah, you can almost, you kind of know that Gerso's goal is to get to that, is to get to the goal line and then, and then play it back. Even if he, that's like that's um, his preferred thing that he wants to do, but he didn't you know, play it back like ninety percent of the time. Yeah, on I know. Night. He played it square into the keeper or right, <laughs> right into the right into the stone wall. Side netting or <laughs> he was he was challenging the young keeper. He was yeah, probably instructed yeah, who, to challenge who, that young guy who passed that test. Did not bite at all. That's that save uh, in particular. You know, didn't bite on any of that. Stayed strong right on his post and was there to 
knee it away, I think is what it was. You know, the, the interesting thing, though, because, I mean, like you've said, he, his goal is to get to the, the end line and cut in and, you know, touch it around the defender and then try to play it into the box and create havoc that way. From the left side, that's, that's what he does. From the right side, obviously, he tries to cut in and take a shot. But that, the thing is, everybody knows that's what he's doing, and they still can't stop him part of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think that, you, okay, this guy's going to do this. This is exactly what he's going to do you should be able to plan out how to stop him, but he still manages to fool him with that speed. Since it's one of the topics of discussion all pretty much all year now is homegrowns, the kids. Mm -hmm. How did Busio do? How did Hernandez do? How did Duke do? I know Duke was only in for 40 well, minutes. This isn't on our agenda, but <laughs> I have my article on Busio coming out later this week, so I don't want to say a whole lot. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could tease tease a little bit of it, but no, I Her, Hernandez did not have like a perfect game by any means. But there were there were a lot of moments that I really liked that oh, were just too. that I that I thought were just showed a, a really good you know soccer IQ and aggressiveness that I really liked from him. And yeah, there were there were a couple I think soft passes that did him in, but I really like I really liked him on the night. And I wish he would shoot a little bit sooner. I think several times he got the yeah, pull ball that outside the box and his first instinct was to look for Russell or uh, Shelton or somebody else. And boom, he, he'd waited. And then when he finally decided to shoot, it was way too late. Yeah. Yeah. And then Gotti being the false nine for the last 40 minutes ish. 30s oh yeah there, there you go how about how about that as a redemption P peter vermis redemption all the complaints <laughs> about not using subs not adapting to in-game problems you know i oh, he, he made a sub they switched the formation i think i don't know i'm trying <laughs> well, <laughs> well they pushed Gotti forward to be the false nine and duke took his place in midfield and it didn't do bad yeah. um question is you know I don't know how Gotti did up there because it was all that was all on the far end, so it was a little harder for me to see at that point. But well, a lot of that second half became a track meet as far as us going forward fast and furious, and that's part of Gotti going up top. But yeah, well, and it paid off on on a couple of those plays. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I am anxious to see those guys, those those young guys play more though. I mean, I you know, not at the not to sacrifice the guys who will win games necessarily, right. but Cam Duke got in there. He looked good. He had a couple good moments there too. He's uh he looks like a guy that knows what he's doing. He just has to get used to the speed of the game at that level. And uh Bob, you saw a certain someone in the elevator at that game that I don't think anyone knows where he is at the moment <laughs> yeah Ilya apparently is back in town well apparently he is i saw him and uh yeah i mean i don't, I don't want to say a whole lot else but uh yeah yeah he is he is physically in the area and you okay, want to talk else? about mr polito but uh you know they showed him and his girl sitting in the stands on tv here pretty close up picture of those two <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not wearing her mask. And of course, everyone was like all about it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Can we talk about Alan Polito? You like his So, haircut? not even. No, I don't like that. I don't like that either. Um, so, it's not even about soccer. I just, it's just, to me, it is just such a weird situation. Can you imagine in any other sport, in any other country, a team's record signing, a team's golden boy? It has not played for three or four games and the last word we got on it was three weeks ago that he just he had a knock in training that it's just unheard of he's been day-to-day -day every time that he's been asked since then day-to-day -to -day with what Thad? it's because of the format of the conversations now it's harder to ask follow-up questions Right. That's the whole, that's, that's the answer to my <laughs> frustration here, I guess, is just basically COVID. That has just created certain circumstances that have just allowed this team to do this and then also not even have to answer any questions about it. They've changed the designation to cleared or not cleared. So I don't have to say what an injury is or give a body part or part of the body. 
And, and for they, clarification, that's not sporting's doing. That's MLS's right. guidance. But just, right, just making right. sure we're not blaming the wrong people. Right. I'm not blaming anyone. It's just a wild situation that has that it's led to this. So the front office, Vermees, no one, no one on the team has to be face to face with anyone in the media every day. No one can see at training what he's doing or if he's there, or if he's on the sideline. It's just created all these circumstances where they can just get away with this. Oh yeah, we we signed our golden boy striker after years and years of waiting, and yeah, he's not playing, but you don't need to know anything about that. Here's my scary thought. And, you know, Jimmy Madronda, what was it last year? Remind me, I don't know, maybe the year before, you know, he was out injured and he was day to day, blah, blah, blah. And basically what was happening was he's being misdiagnosed. His injury was, and they never got it right until much later. And they finally did. And he had surgery. And he was out, you know, until the next May or whatever it was. I hope to God that's not the situation here. We haven't seen Polito walk around with a big knee brace on like we did Jimmy Madronda, but, um, you know, it just scares me thinking about that. <laughs> the injury he has, they can't figure out what it is. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's anything nefarious. And again, I'm not blaming anyone with the team. They've always just been, you know, very strict and they like to control the flow of information. And Vermees is never once ever gonna tip his hand in any way if he doesn't have to. So <laughs> if if these circumstances have been created where he doesn't have to divulge any of this information, they're not going to. But there's a press conference on Friday. I'm hoping someone asks this question and gets something of an answer on what the heck is going on. I don't know. Well I guess Friday is the day to see if if we get if we get something on if he's gonna be available for the game. If not what what area of the body upper middle <laughs> lower like <laughs> like what like give us something like <laughs> I, I just wonder if they're not even going to say that now even if directly asked because they're not disclosing anything you know what i mean because uh, of the way covid is hmm. well and and so the the other aspect of this is local news they don't really care enough to push the question at all we don't have the sway. <laughs> the Blue Testament doesn't have the sway to be demanding answers over and over again. <laughs> and the star, they won't ever push anything because they get fed all their stuff. <laughs> it's just, it's set up for them perfectly to not have to divulge any info. And I just think that that is like a wild situation. I Actually, agree I with everything you're saying, Cody. I think if Sam was still there, he would have actually, if it was, he would have actually kept asking that until they either answered him or told him they were never going to answer him. <laughs> you know, you're probably right. You're probably right. I mean, Sam would have done that. Sam, um, Sam would have done that. That is true. I'll, I got to give that to Sam McDowell. He, he, he had a fair amount of stories fed to him, but he could also be pushy when he wanted to. And we, mm -hmm. so that's one of the things that was good about him. Yeah, he did. He even pissed him off a couple of times, actually. But Uh-huh. I just know if I piss them off too bad, I will just, I'll have to be using my tickets to go to the sit in the stands. So I don't know, right? <laughs> now, Thad, you, if you pissed them off, there would be a lot of fans that would be really upset. There are people who would come out of the woodwork to defend you. If I lost my credential, <laughs> if I lost my credential, I would, I would just fade away into the darkness. <laughs> I don't think people know me that well, Cody. Oh, whatever. People know the back post at least. I see people defend you on Reddit. I guess that's also where I'm guess getting this sentiment. <laughs> I, I see I see that a lot. Of uh, your one of your tweets about something was on there recently, and the somebody list. posed the question of, "Oh yeah, that's right, yeah." And somebody, oh yeah, you all you're on Reddit. I know you saw that. Somebody was like, "Where does this come from? Was this source reliable?" And several people, multiple people, commented back in yep. Yeah, like a whole two. <laughs> oh, was it just speaking of two, less Maybe than three. two? If we want to talk about anything else. Yeah, I don't, we, I don't know that we can talk too much about it, but we should touch on two transfer rumors here very quickly. Juan Sanchez Mino, he has, he has now joined Elche. I'm just going for it. No freaking clue. Elche in Spain. <laughs> he was rumored to be, like, Sporting was interested in trying to get him to come here. The tweet that was, like, the declaring that he had signed said that he had an offer from Sporting but chose this one. So, yeah, we can forget about that one. That means nothing anymore. But Sporting Kansas City is tied to 22-year-old Calvin Miller from Celtic. Winger fullback. That'd be nice. I would very much like that one. 
who's not played for a year because he's been injured. Yeah. Two Scottish guys on the wing. I'm here for that one. I'd rather see him go to Sport Park, Sporting KC2, see if he's actually any good. But, I mean, they, I'm right. sure they'll know better than me. October 29th, right? So plenty of time for stuff. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Okay, guys, we're going to get out of here. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Blue Testament KC. Join us at thebluetestament.com and leave us a comment. And we will talk to you later this week. We'll preview for the next match. So we'll talk to you soon. This morning. Woo! Anything to shake this foot I'm in My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking My foot buttings got me drinking